It's time for football now on the Sportsmax Zone. The world's most to watch football league, the EPL, is back. And on opening day Friday, a tantalizing matchup with newly promoted Burnley, spearheaded by their head coach, Vincent Company, welcoming his mentor, Pep Guardiola, and his treble winning Manchester City team to Turf Moor. Although the match was built as a battle between both coaches, it was a similar story to what we saw all of last season. The Erling Haaland show on display yet again. The Norwegian talisman scoring the first two goals of the season to lead Manchester City to a 3 0 victory. Joining us to review the game is our international football correspondent, Simon Evans. Simon, thanks a lot for joining us. Always great to have you on the show. And Man City just picking up where they left off last season. Yeah, they weren't even uh, at their best, to be honest. Um, they, it was a, something of a training session for them in the second half. They got ahead in the third minute, which was exactly what Burnley didn't want to happen, of course, in a game like that. Um, but City, Kevin De Bruyne getting injured was a, a big negative for them. But but it was pretty easy most of the time. I mean, Burnley are a very different team to the one they were under Sean Dyche, that people remember as, as a very physical and uh, rigid sort of side. They play much more trying to play the same sort of style as Manchester City under company, but it, it didn't really work. Yeah, um, the Manchester City team, well, they've won five of the last six EPL titles, haven't they? Uh, but they are trying now to win four consecutively, which has never been done before. Um, what are the possibilities? Well, I think they are favourites to win. But if you look at it from that standpoint, it may be a little bit more difficult than some of the bookmakers are suggesting. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be uh, totally, you know, a march to the title again for them because I think I think the teams around them. There's been enough improvements there. I think uh, Arsenal have strengthened in, in, a, in a significant way. I think bringing Declan Rice in there has, has really, you know, given them a, a much more solid feel in that midfield. Um, and I think Arsenal will push push City hard, hard this year. And then, you know, we, we look at uh, some of the other teams and say, well, are Liverpool and Chelsea ready to get back in there? Are Manchester United significantly better than last year? I'm not quite sure about that. But it's, 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 it's going to be a battle. I don't, I don't see City walking away with it this year. All right. Uh, we still have a full weekend of nine more games to look forward to. Let's uh, look at those fixtures quickly for the weekend's matches in the EPL. Uh, well, we've already seen the City 3-0 victory over Burnley. Arsenal runners up last year at home to Nottingham Forest. Crystal Palace travelling to Sheffield United. Bournemouth at home to West Ham. Brighton at home to Luton Town. Everton at home to Fulham. Aston Villa travelling to Newcastle. Brentford at home to Tottenham. Liverpool away to Chelsea. And Wolves away to Manchester United. Well, Mariah Ramharak is uh, uh, glowing because her team got off to an, on, on an expected winning start today. Um, some bother for her that uh, Kevin De Bruyne got a, a bit of a, an injury. We're not too sure how serious the injury is, Mara. Yeah. But um, a great start to the season and lots of matches left the, for the weekend. Yeah, I am very, very excited, Lance, based on you know the start we had. But I want to pose this one to Simon because he has been so close to the action, right? Simon, Kevin De Bruyne, for a Manchester City fan who spends a lot of money on him on those fantasy football league, it's not the start that you want to see from one of your key players. It happened in the Champions League. It's happening now. Should I get rid of him? No, they shouldn't get rid of him, but they should be concerned about it and start to really manage his load carefully, I think, because... He's such a fantastic player and so fundamental to them. Um, but, you know, this is happening a bit too often with him, isn't it? So it is a concern, I think, and, and I don't think they'll rush him back now until he's completely ready. And Mateo Kovacic came on, uh, who they signed from Chelsea. Yeah. And I thought looked pretty good, actually. He's a very good player, is Kovacic. I'm surprised that Chelsea um, have let him go uh, so easily. And uh, so that's, but they're not like for like. So City without De Bruyne aren't as strong and they need to manage him carefully now. Right, and it's so unfortunate. Burnley have the toughest team to face in their opening fixture, um, yeah. joining back the EPL. But I think what I saw from Burnley today was a lot of heart. Yeah, I think they want him to be uh, a little bit more than that. They, they did have the heart, they stuck at it. Uh, but the idea with Vincent Company is that they play a more progressive football, much more possession-based. Last season in the Championship, they ran away with it, playing some beautiful football. 
they haven't been able to bring back all of that team because a few of them were loan players who uh, who the clubs haven't been willing to let go again for this season. But um, Burnley are confident that they can finish comfortably away from the relegation zone. I mean, I'm a Burnley fan, to be honest, and, and I'm not completely convinced about that after this game. But you have to put a big asterisk next to it and say you're playing the best team in the world. Yeah, and a team that will love the challenge for this season's EPL title arsenal will be in action tomorrow against Nottingham Forest. What do you think about this Arsenal squad? You know, um, the strengths this season. Gabriel Jesus is a bit unfortunate that you know he's already picked up an injury. But how do you see Arsenal getting about their business this season? Yeah, I've seen a little bit of their preseason in the United States, and and uh, it was a it was a bit. It's bag, really, but I do think, as I said earlier, that Rice makes a big difference to them in midfield. And I think uh, Kai Havertz, although people comment about his lack of goals and so on, I think he's also a smart acquisition because I think Arteta can get the best out of him in a way that Chelsea fans uh, didn't quite see. And we've seen that quite a few times with players from Chelsea, haven't we? Mohamed Salah, of course, at uh, uh, Liverpool was a player who was at Chelsea, showed very little, was fantastic at Liverpool. And, of course, the man we've just been talking about, Kevin De Bruyne, was a Chelsea player who they didn't uh, feel they needed to keep hold of. So I think Kai Havertz might uh, turn out to be a really smart signing for them. Yeah, a team that I had finishing in the top four this season, Newcastle. None of my co-hosts and teammates felt as if Newcastle will finish in the top four. They will be up against Aston Villa. Simon, what do you think about the prospects for Newcastle this season? I think that's a really interesting game and a really good early test because Villa are another team that people are talking about as being maybe doing the same as Newcastle did last year. Um, maybe not pushing into the top four, but certainly being around fifth or sixth possibly, whereas Villa have been a mid-table team. Why? Because Unai Emery, when he came into Villa, uh, really had an incredible impact after Steven Gerrard left and, and turned that team around and they finished the team uh, the team finished as probably one of the form sides behind Manchester City in the league in, in, in that period, uh, the, the back half of the season. So a lot of confidence around Villa. Newcastle are back in, into the Champions League and, and that's going to be a real test for them. Are they strong enough? Have they got the, the depth of squad to be able to play it on two fronts? And I'm, I'm sceptical of that. I think, I think they are good enough to go, they would be good enough to go again and push for a top four position, but not playing twice a week. Mm. Uh, Simon, Chelsea prolific in the transfer market, more prolific than any of the uh, other EPL teams. They're up against Liverpool in the big weekend match. Um, your thoughts, first of all, on Chelsea's acquisition and how strong they might be this term, having done badly the season before. Yeah, I think, you know, the arrival of Pochettino is more important than, than, than any of the signings. They've made, they've made some interesting moves in the transfer market. Um, a little bit more modest in some respects than they have been in the past. Um, but the, he's trying to build something different there. And I think we'll start to see players like McAllister, um, who, who's come in from... Uh, sorry, no, he hasn't come in, McAllister. I've got that wrong, hasn't he? He's gone to Liverpool. But there's been so much to him in Florida. They're trying to get Caicedo from, from Brighton, who Liverpool have been after as well. But I think Pochettino is going to give some of the younger players a real chance to establish themselves at Chelsea. I think he has a really clear idea of the football that he wants to play, which wasn't evident at all at Chelsea last season. So I do expect Chelsea to be better, but I'm not convinced that they're going to be pushing for the title. Um, and they might have a struggle to get top four. Liverpool, I think, I think can start to, to look at this season as one where they, they have to bounce back, really. I know they've lost Henderson, who's gone to to Saudi Arabia, but they brought in a couple of players who, who should give them some, some different options. And I think there's still a strong squad. I think last year was a weird one for Liverpool, and I expect them to be, to be back in the conversation this season. Mm. Well, Chelsea had a weird, weird season as well. <laughs> you know, Liverpool, I accept, had yeah. a weird season, but Chelsea, Chelsea's season wasn't, wasn't any less weird, Simon. Uh, your prediction on Sunday's match, though? <laughs> um, I can see that one being a draw, but... But goals are both end, 2-2. Two, two. OK. 2-2. Two, two. Mm. All right, uh, Simon, we're going to leave it there. Um, there is the Man United Wolves game as well. Man United continuing on a rebuilding program. That match is on, on Monday. Um, your thoughts on how Ten Hag's men will do there? 
Yeah, I mean, there is optimism about, about United at the start of the season. That's often the case. But I just, I just think I'm puzzled by what they've done in, in, in terms of bringing a striker in. I mean, they were linked with Harry Kane. They've been linked with, with big strikers. And, and they brought it in Hoyland from Atlanta for big money, 70, 80 million, for a player who has had one season in Serie A, didn't score a fantastic amount of goals, um, and also you know, has picked up an injury straight away. So, I, you know, I'm not seeing them being much stronger in, in the mm. attack. Um, yeah. But I do think my extra quality that they needed in that midfield. Yeah. Mm. All right, we're going to leave it there, Simon. I, I gather that you will be at Lauder Hill watching the West Indies take on India on the fourth T20 International on Saturday. Let's hope that you give the West Indies some good luck because I know you like the Windies very much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It should be it should be an entertaining one. And they've not done too badly in T20, right? No. Recently? We're doing okay. We're leading 2-1. <laughs> All right, yeah, Simon. Still the format's still the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you again soon. Oh. Right, and we'll be back with more on the Sportsman soon after this. Yes.